Hello dear students. This is the first video in a series of videos where we shall be dealing with some basic concepts involved in the study of organic compounds and how and why of their behavior under different conditions of the reaction. When we talk about organic chemistry or study of organic compounds, we know that in any chemical reaction, the substrate is attacked by a reagent to give us what we call as an intermediate. Now this intermediate is unstable and it has a tendency to break down to give us what we call as products. When we talk about organic compounds and their study, what is the nature of the substrate? What kind of reagent are you using? What are the conditions of the reaction? You will notice that there are in organic chemistry, a same reaction being carried out at 140 degrees Celsius and 170 degrees Celsius gives us different products. So during those reaction conditions, what are the intermediates formed and Finally, the intermediate decides the product, the end product of a reaction. All these are the ones which affect. So we have the nature of the substrate, the type of reagent used, the reaction conditions, the intermediate form. All these four conditions go on to decide the product which is formed in the reaction, in a particular organic reaction. First, we shall study a few of the effects which are involved. So we are going to talk about inductive effect, electromeric effect, uh, resonance and hyperconjugation effect. In this video, I have taken two effects simultaneously. So inductive effect and electromeric effect is what we are going to talk about in this. Inductive comes from the word induce that means to cause. To cause an effect. Here, what we observe in the case of organic compounds is if you have a highly electronegative atom attached to a carbon atom, this electronegative atom tries to pull this electron pair towards itself. This electron pair is the sigma bonded electron pair. That means the electron pair which is involved in the formation of a sigma bond. Here we've taken a very simple example. Chloride, chlorine. It's a highly electronegative atom. It tries to pull the sigma pair of electrons towards itself. In the process, now there's no complete transfer. Please remember that there's no transfer. It's just that the electron cloud is concentrated more towards chlorine. It is just like Two children are having a tug of war and one is bulkier or stronger than the other and he is able to pull the uh, rope more towards himself. So this is kind of a tug, and tug of war but we are not talking about the rope completely moving towards the chlorine atom. So with the result chlorine will acquire slight negative charge. Whereas the carbon to which it is attached, from which it is pulling away the electron pair, acquires a slight positive charge. Now this carbon, because it has got a positive charge, it gets nasty and it says, I want electron pair. I want to satisfy myself. So what he does is, he pulls the electron cloud from the next carbon atom because he knows that he can't have his say with the chlorine. So when he does that, in turn, this carbon also acquires a slight positive charge. But mind you, here the positive charge acquired by the second carbon atom is slightly less than that acquired by the first carbon atom which is being directly affected by the bully. Come to the second carbon atom. Now it is deficient in electrons. It tries to satisfy its need for electrons by pulling electron cloud away from the third carbon atom. With the result, the third carbon atom acquires a slight positive charge. But if you notice, I've put three dashes over here, indicating that the positive charge acquired by the third carbon atom will still be lower than that acquired by the second carbon atom. By the time we reach the fourth carbon atom, this 
thunder has subsided, this tug of war has almost become negligible. So beyond the fourth carbon atom actually, this tendency to pull electron becomes almost zero. So we have a case of a chain behavior where one fluorine is pulling this carbon, carbon bullies the next one, third one and the fourth one. So this way it goes on in the chain but by the time it le uh, reaches the fourth carbon atom the effect has become quite subdued to affect the next carbon atom. Similar behavior can happen vice versa also. In other words, you know that if you give something negative to somebody, it gets transmitted. The same thing can happen for the positive behavior as well. Just like they say a smile is contagious. So here the methyl group actually has a tendency to give electrons towards the carbon. So now the carbon acquires a slightly negative charge. This effect is what we call as inductive effect. In other words, due to the presence of an atom or a group of atoms, movement of sigma electrons takes place towards either towards the carbon atom, as in this case, or away from the carbon atom. And that is what we call as inductive effect. Why are we relating everything to carbon is because we're talking about organic compounds which are centered completely up around uh, carbon. This, as we said, involves sigma electrons. It is being transmitted along the chain. We are showing inductive effect by means of an arrow pointing from the less electronegative to the more electronegative atom in each of these cases if you notice. Alternately, we can also show it by a delta sign with a positive or a negative charge. The cause for this behavior is simply the electronegativity difference between the two atoms. Because they are developing positive and negative charge, you can actually observe this effect scientifically in terms of dipole moment. In other words, this molecule which according to us should not have any dipole moment actually develops a dipole moment because of the electronegativity difference between the carbon and the chlorine atom. How do we say what atom is more electronegative and which one is less electronegative? Which will pull the electrons and which will give away the electrons? For that we have chosen the carbon hydrogen bond as the standard where we assume that the inductive effect is zero. Accordingly, we have two types of groups. You have seen over here. There are groups which can pull electrons. There are groups which are very humble, which will give electrons towards the carbon. So one is the takeaway group and one is a give to group. So the one which takes away acquires a negative charge. So we say that there are minus I effect groups, for example, chloride, bromide, cyanide, nitride, these are all examples of groups which will take away electrons from the carbon. On the other hand, there are the give two groups which are very humble. They will give electrons like we have methyl, ethyl, isopropyl, isobutyl and so on and so forth. So they will cause plus I effect whereas the first ones will cause a minus I effect. In other words, they themselves will acquire a negative charge. And the give two effects, they will themselves require positive charge. Let's come to the other effect, electromeric effect. Just break it down. Electro is electrons, part is portion. The movement of electrons to one portion of the molecule. Electromeric effect is something which will happen when a reagent comes close to a molecule it is not there in the molecule. It's very impartial. This molecule is very impartial. It's equally divided the electrons. But when a stranger comes in, for example, we've taken an example of a bromide ion over here. Because of the bromide ion, the electron pair. Now here we are talking about the double bond. In other words, 
This is an effect which is taking place in compounds which have multiple bonds in them. That means double or triple bonds. Double or triple bond means there will be pi electrons involved over here. So because of the presence of the bromide ion, the electron cloud, the pi electron cloud moves towards one of the carbon atoms. So we've taken the second one. This is the carbon. Now bromide itself has a negative charge. Now since the electron cloud has moved to this carbon, it will require negative charge. This will require positive charge. Bromide is negative. It goes and attaches itself to the first carbon. With the result, R intermediate now is negatively charged. In other words, because of the presence of the reagent, this molecule has acquired negative effect. This is what we call as minus E effect. Here, the movement of electrons is taking place to away from the attacking reagent. Just observe over here. We did not talk about the reagent over here at all under inductive effect. In other words, inductive effect is a permanent effect. It is there in the molecule whether there is a reagent or not. So if you have a sample of the substrate, it will show dipole moment and it will have the inductive effect which will affect its physical and chemical behavior. Electromeric effect on the other hand, comes into play only and only when there is the presence of a reagent. And depending on the reagent, we can have the positive or the negative effect. That is why we call it as a temporary effect. In other words, it is something which is dependent only on the presence of a reagent. We've taken a second example of a plus E effect. I've got H positive. Movement of electron cloud takes place because of this negative, positive. Since our reagent is positively charged, which carbon will it attack? The positive or the negative? So here we have the intermediate wherein our molecule acquires a positive charge. So in other words, the movement of electron cloud is taking place towards the attacking reagent. I like to remember it this way that a minus E effect group uh, results in a compound with a negative charge, whereas a plus E effect group gives us an intermediate with a positive charge. If you notice over here, we are not using straight arrows, we are using a, a curved arrow over here in order to indicate the movement of the pi electron cloud. Unlike inductive effect where we had used a straight line arrow. It is not transmitted along a chain. It is settled once the reagent becomes attached to it. In other words, this is an effect which comes into play during the course of a chemical reaction just depending on the reaction conditions as to what are the reagents that you are using, what are the reaction conditions which will decide the electromeric effect. You will find a write-up on this on the site Learning Chemistry is Fun. It's a Google site. It's a free site. I'm not selling here anything. It's just that I feel that this is a topic which many children are not able to understand easily in the first go. You may find it, find it confusing after, even after you watch this video first time. So I would request you to go through this again a second time slowly and the best is if you can explain it to somebody else further on, it will enhance your confidence as well as help to pass knowledge to other people. All the best.